Hey everyone, I want to talk to you about a process that I have people go through that allows them to overcome one of the most difficult challenges that it seems that human beings have, and that is to uncover what they truly want in life. The process is based on an idea that I had a long time ago when I first started coaching people uh, to become the success that they want to in life and business. I realized that they had a very difficult time accepting the good. Like even if we were making marginal progress, right, and their income was going up, their business was getting better, there was a, they were having a difficult time accepting that. And then with some individuals, if we got their income up really quick, which is something that we've always had a, the great success in doing and helping a person significantly raise their income, what they did with the money was interesting. It was almost as if, you would think that they would want to enjoy it a bit, but in many cases, they had tremendous guilt and shame around doing that. It was almost as if they wanted to hide the money or hide the fact that they were making money. And I started having conversations with them, and I heard a whole host of different emotions that they would experience. Embarrassment, shame, guilt. The feeling that they did something wrong was very interesting to me. I started out, if you've been following the podcast for any period of time, my story on how I got started in this was just pretty famous in some circles. It began with a huge increase in income. My income tripled in 30 days when I was a young man and had no experience. And I was so astounded by that. I spent, I've spent the rest of my life basically studying it. So one of the things that I've done with business owners is I've helped them dramatically increase their income in very short periods of time because it's actually really easy to do but that's for another that's for another uh, conversation but when they would do this it was the reactions that's kind of surprised me i kind of understood the shame and the guilt a little bit right it was very new the income was kind of reflecting off their own belief system and their own kind of self image of themselves but one one of the ones that was really startling was the idea that many of them felt like they had done something wrong and after having many conversations with these individuals, it was the reason stemmed from this basic premise. Their whole life, they were told that it was supposed to be hard. And here I am showing them that it can be easy and showing them the steps to actually make a large income easy. And then they would do the steps. They would have this big, large income change. It was a total value conflict inside themselves. In other words, one part of their personality wanted to make a lot of money, but another part said, you can't do this unless it's really hard. So I began working with them on that. And one of the things that uh, I started doing with people, and this was just an experiment in the beginning, was I said, when was the last time you allowed yourself to want something? And like the phone would go dead or, you know, they wouldn't know what to say, blank stare in their face. And I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to start saying yes to the things that you want, regardless of your circumstances, right? And start where you are, right? So this is one of those things where you can't, you can't try to prove this in a metaphor because it won't work. You have to do it individually, just you, and you based on your life. Because part of this is getting to know who you truly are. So what are we taught growing up? We can't have it all. We can't have everything, right? You shouldn't buy more than you need. You shouldn't want more than you need. You should live based, you know, very close to your needs. Don't go into debt. Don't overspend. In a lot of worlds, that advice makes sound sense because a person has a fixed income and they're not taught that their income is going to vary that much through their lifetime. So they have to learn to live within their means so they don't get themselves into trouble totally sound. However, when a kid learns this from the very beginning of life, and they're not really taught that they have the ability to control their income, they have the ability to create whatever income they want. It doesn't matter how big it is or how small it is, or none of that matters. The only thing that matters is what they want. If they're not taught that, they're always taught the opposite, which is you can't have what you want. So after a child hears that a few hundred times and it gets sunk into their subconscious mind, it automatically takes over their own desire. They may go, oh, I would really want that, but I can't have that. I can't, I can't do that. I can't afford that. I can't spend that. Oh, that would be really nice, but I can't do that. Why do you think lotteries are so big? 
because it's an opportunity, it's a chance in a gazillion, whatever it is, that for a couple of dollars, right, a couple of dollars anybody can afford, you've got this slight chance that you might be able to win several hundred million, or now they're up in the up in the billions. So people go, oh, what the hell? We'll try it. And they're getting bigger and bigger. Like, it's crazy how big these lotteries are getting. But what does that tell us? It tells us that people do want a lot more. But it's not okay for them to actually explore that for real in their life. So they view it as a gamble, as a harmless risk. It's just a few bucks here or there. It's not going to make a big difference. Okay, fair enough. I've played a lottery too before. But what if, what if you actually began to change the process and allowed yourself to want what you want? It doesn't mean that you go out and you're going to be like, I'm going to go spend millions of dollars when I don't have it. That's not what it, I've never met anybody, by the way, where when we started this process, that that's the first thing that they wanted to do. I say, take a look at your life closely, your day-to-day -day life, just you, not any of your family, just you. And pay very close attention, say for a week or two weeks or a month. What are the things that you find yourself wanting inside, internally, and you tell yourself no? That's the first step. Write those things down somewhere. But the idea is that you have to pay attention to it because most of the time we go through this process and we shut it off so fast. We say, I can't have that so fast that we never give it any other consideration. So it may take a while before you actually start paying attention to this. It's our human nature to want things, to desire, because it's only through the use of things that we can expand our life. We are here to create. We're here to create the life that we truly want, but we've been given a lot of impotent ideas that keep us held back. So if you start off by paying attention to what they are. Now, the second step is this. Start saying yes to those desires right? Allow yourself to be, do, or have them, Is right? And I'm not talking about anything that's unethical. I'm not talking about anything that would harm somebody. I'm not talking about a desire if you get angry at somebody to go punch them in the head. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the things that you truly would love to have for your life. And start where you find yourself denying them. Yes, maybe you do have the dream for the big whatever it is in the future, but it all starts very close to your home every day, your, your own physical home. The things that you walk by, that you see, that you would like to have, that you deny yourself. What if you started saying yes to those things? Now, as fast as I'm saying that, I'm sure some of you are going, but, I, but you don't understand. I can't afford it. I can't do this. I can't do that. Or my spouse will be ticked off or whatever. Those are all ways that we convince ourselves that we can't actually have what we want. I'm challenging you to start allowing yourself to actually be, do, or have what you want. To start small, to start where you are, and allow your own desire to actually open like a flower inside of yourself because it's there. That desire that will point us in the right direction for our life is in every human being, but it must be nurtured. It must be brought to the surface. We must get to know it. We must have an intimate relationship with that desire in order for it to work. In other words, we can hear it. We know what it is. It's pointing us in the right direction. The thing is, is that we shut it down for so many reasons. It would probably take me half a day to sit here and go through all the different reasons. But let's just look at a big bunch of them. Big one, you don't, you don't have money. But it started when your parents didn't have money, when they couldn't meet that desire inside of you. Then there's the idea of, are you capable of it. Well, if you didn't show a talent or a skill set around it in the beginning and your parents didn't have money and it was inconvenient, then they might say that you're not capable. What if it's upset somebody else? What if it's not something that somebody else really wants to be involved in? Mom and dad could care less to get shut down. What if, it, what if it's something that your peer group didn't agree with? It gets shut down. So a pattern starts to develop that we actually put other people's wants for us in front of our own. And that's the way most people actually live their life. They don't stand up for themselves and say, this is what I really want. And it's not about hurting anybody else or making anybody wrong. It's about actually knowing yourself. But if you can't break away from those internal processes that are telling you not to do it, what ends up happening 
is that you think you don't have that desire in you. You think it's not there. You can't find it. it. Must be great for somebody else, but not for me. You know, I've never found it. I've looked for it my whole life. I've never found it. You've never found it because you've been looking in the wrong place. See, we actually don't know how we stop ourselves from doing things if we don't ever hear what the strategy is, right? All you have to do is hear, like, you probably know right from wrong, and you probably stop yourselves from doing things wrong all the time. Now, I realize that's different for every people, uh, for everybody, and some people don't listen to it, and they do really bad things. But I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking to you. Why do you stop yourself? Why would you stop yourself from doing something bad, something that's unethical, something that's outside of your purview as far as what's right for you or humanity or people that are around you? Because you've been taught your whole life not to do those things. So there's an internal guide inside of you, right? It's calling at your values going, nope, this is not who you are. You don't do this. So that's something that's obvious if we think about it. But you have to realize that a lot of our life, the things that we've been told that we can't do, or even told who we're not in life. How many kids are raised in an environment where teachers, parents, grandparents, peers are all saying that they're not something that they truly feel that they are on the inside, but because they're young and they don't have any maturity around it, they can't actually explain it to anybody. And of course, all of the smart people are looking around and they're going, I don't see any evidence of this, or it triggers them in some way, and they just crush that down inside the child. They risk that child never finding it because they learn that they have to put other people's opinion before their own desires. We raise people today with a value around that, that we should put other people first before ourselves. And I'm not talking about in a way that seems obviously selfish. I'm talking about in a way where you have every right to become the best person that you can be. And I don't care how many mistakes you've made in your life. We all have. We all have. The idea is can we be conscious enough to understand that we've made mistakes and continue to move forward every, every, anyway? Do you surround yourself with people that want to limit you to the mistakes of your past? You've got to get rid of those people. You, got to get, you cannot listen to that. We do that as a society in a way that is terrifying by canceling people. They make a mistake and we cancel them. We try to take everything away from them. Why would people do that to each other? Because they're afraid of their own greatness. That's why. The, oh, come on, David. It can't, that's, that doesn't make any sense. It may not make any sense the first time you hear it. But why would somebody want to stop somebody else from living in their greatness? Think about that. Why? Because they're denying it to themselves. They don't want anybody to represent anything better than what they've done because that threatens who they think they are and who they think they're not. If you'll start right where you are now, and start giving yourself permission to want what you want and to start to go after, right? Be, do, have what you want. Say yes to your desires. You're going to open up something inside of yourself that you previously didn't even understand was there. And not only is it wonderful and beautiful, but it does something else that's really magical. It starts to point your life in a direction of why you're actually here and finding your purpose. This, by the way, is the whole secret to finding your purpose. I know that there's been all kinds of books on it from all different perspectives, right? It's not that complicated. A squirrel doesn't have any trouble finding its purpose, right? A moose has no trouble finding its purpose. A rose has no trouble finding its purpose. But human beings have a terrible problem with it. Maybe we were taught something that was incorrect. Again, it's not that those people were bad. It's just what they were taught right? A lot of the false beliefs that we carry were real at one time, and we believed them because it was built into survival. But you don't need that anymore. So if you start to say yes to yourself, and you begin to uncover your purpose, and you begin to uncover the direction of what you want, the mystical, magical thing about it is that everything that you need starts showing up. Every single thing that you need starts showing up, just like it does in nature for all of nature. It begins to show up. And it shows up when it's following its purpose. So this is the step. It's, two, it's just two steps. Pay attention to where you're telling yourself no. Second step, start telling yourself yes. And keep doing it. When you finally get to the place inside of yourself where it becomes okay for you to want what you want, the whole world opens up to you. And it is an absolutely wonderful thing. Because you're here for a reason. 
You just have to believe that and start following it. If you know somebody that's struggling in life, send them this video. And if you want to know more information about this process and various other ones that we take people through for success, go to lifeisnowinc.com. I'll see you next week.